Derek, I'll start with you. When you look As at always. the beginning, when when you look at the beginning of this government, the second, the Pramod Sawant 2.0, as we call it. Uh, what are the salient features that come to your mind as of now? <laughs> uh, Pramod, uh, you know, uh, what we are trying to analyze here is whether uh, Pramod Sawant is uh, started on the right foot. I wouldn't say right foot or wrong foot, but I think it's the old foot that is continuing to go forward. You see, why I say this is because with a chief minister, there are two things. One is the chief minister is like the CEO of the state, so he has to manage the state, and all CMs tend to do that. But the second aspect of any CM is the legacy he's trying to create and what he wants to leave behind. Like in the case of uh, uh, Manohar Parikar, it was Ifi and bridge building. In the case of Digambar Kamath, it was the regional plan, uh, South Goa Hospital, the South Goa Collectorate. What is the CM, the present CM, trying to do? You know that will, that will, you know, what do you call it? Cement his place in political history of Goa. Mm. And with this budget, I see nothing of that sort. It is just management from the last two years, which he's carrying on into the next uh, mm. five years. There are opportunities for him to make his mark, but he has, doesn't seem to have seized any of those opportunities. Uh, uh, yeah, very, very interesting. Cleofas, Bab, uh, how do you look at it? Uh, I entirely agree with Derek. See, this was an opportunity for the chief minister because of numbers. In adverse circumstances, he has got 20. Another government headed by somebody else is just not possible. So for him, it was Pramod Savan, and for us, it was Pramod Savan only because BJP went into elections under his leadership. He had 20, 20 plus three independents were almost in his pocket. The MGP has given support to him. So, with this, according to me, he was facing no heat of power. Hmm. But somehow it appears he is facing that heat. I do not know why. Hmm. Up to now, up to now, the portfolios are not getting distributed. Uh, up to the, the, the swearing in took such a long time. It looks like the government started preparing the budget much before the swearing in, otherwise it was not possible to give the budget the next day, it was just not possible. But immediately after the results and immediately after the government was known, they must have started preparing the budget. But carrying what uh, Derek said, I would like to take this a bit further. See, with such kind of mandate, it was not required for the government to bring in these elements of divisiveness. Say, the 20 crores amount set aside for temples destroyed during Portuguese time. Uh, Satish Don's yesterday's message on Ambedkar is again on not on the right tone. See, we are at such a point in history that we this old game of somehow create divisiveness, hate, hatred has to give way to inclusiveness and this 20 mandate across communities, across castes was such an opportunity. I do not know why it is being frittered away. Okay. I think that's a very, very interesting. We'll, we'll go to, we'll delve deeper into that point in a while. Manoj, politically, economically, uh, whether this government has begun on the right note. I must, I must give some kind of credit to this government first. First, understand that this within 48 hours when the government comes to power, uh, someone is presenting the budget. So this budget cannot be looked at it, looked at from the political angle, point number one. Because uh, Council of Ministers uh, is, is yet to be fully formed. Portfolio allocations is yet to be made. This budget came in without any budget, uh, what do you say, memorandums. There was no wish list presented by the industry. Of course, there was no chance for it. If this, if Pramod Savan had to prepare this budget, start preparing this budget earlier, you would have accused him of saying that the caretaker government is preparing the budget. 
So where is the scope for the new government to prepare the budget? But then it was a necessity that the budget had to be presented before the financial year, before the beginning of the financial year and this budget was presented. So it seems to me that budget is not prepared by the politician. It is not prepared by Dr. Pramod Savan. This budget is presented on the behalf of the government which is prepared by the bureaucrats. So mm -hmm. that's point number one. Now what, now what the budget looks to me, now this budget looks to me as that the Parikar era has ended completely politically and economically also. Because if you look at the Parikar way of looking at economics, we have seen a complete deviation. Earlier before the elections, we have seen that there was also a complete deviation to Parikar way of handling elections. But everything said and done. Pramod Savant has somewhere proved that he is the leader. He can perform in adverse circumstances and he has started on a note. Whether it is a good note or the bad note, then we will have to analyze the budget very deeply. But one thing is clear, when the government is at its magnificent majority, the idea is clear. You know, you have seen the kind of delay uh, to announce the chief minister. We have seen the kind of abnormal delay in order to announce the ministers to distribute the portfolios. And what is the message what Delhi is giving? The message what Delhi is trying to give is there is minimum agenda you will drive at the local level. Hmm. Agenda will come from the center and therefore there is little scope for all the leaders including the chief minister to do his maneuvering uh, in, in, in next five years term. Hmm.